All right, so the first thing that I like to always get set up is making sure I've got my batteries on charge and get the solar panel set up. So let me go ahead and quickly deploy the PowerFilm solar panel. This is really easy to do. I just need one cable, which is this here. And I'm gonna disconnect this short one from here. Plug this one onto here. And we're ready to deploy. Now, as we talked about in the solar power episode, I like to take the battery and plug the battery into the solar charge controller, into the Power Mini Plus. That goes into the battery port. That powers up the Power Mini. And then take the solar panels and plug those in. And we have additional power. We're generating uh, 1.27 uh, amps at this point. And that should be more than enough for us. So we'll just leave this set up here. Next, uh, I think the first antenna that I'm going to try and set up, I want to try and send some traffic with the Elecraft AX1 antenna. So let me get the station set up. After looking at the propagation tables earlier today, uh, I know that 40 meters should be pretty good. And so from out here, we'll start off with trying to operate on 40 meters to send some wind link traffic. So this is the AX1 antenna. It goes together really simply. You simply just take the, this is the 40 meter coil. Just simply put that in there and screw it in together. It doesn't go together super tight, just enough to make it snug. There's a little switch here at the bottom and this allows us to select whether or not we want 17 or 20 meters if we're just using the, the base coil and the whip. But if we add the 40 meter coil, then this switch switches between the 40 meter band in the lower position and the 30 meter band in the upper position. So we're gonna leave it set in the lower position for 40 meters. Screw on the whip. So rather than try and use just the biped, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up on the tripod. Oh, crap. No, I'm not. The base plate is attached to the camera. <laughs> All right, <laughs> this is part of preparing your gear because I don't have the base plate in order to use this. So this is a useless piece of kit to me right now. All right. I forgot the tripod base plate in order to mount any of the gear to the small tripod that I brought with me. So this is actually not helpful to me at this point. Normally it lives in the bag and I should have checked that before heading out. So we'll just adjust our plans in order to set up and still be able to operate. That's not a problem with the AX1. So instead of using the tripod mount that I had intended on using, what I'll use is the biped mount. And you need a tuner with this antenna. So I'm gonna use the AX or the, uh, the AH705 for that. And I've got the cables for that. So we'll go ahead and you just quickly connect that up to the radio. So that's ready to go. So we'll connect the antenna portion and then we'll come over here and plug this port into the tuner port. So that's ready to go. And then the other side of this just plugs into the bottom of the tuner. So the coax goes in and then the control port goes right there. Now, one of the things that I carry with me is a couple of short lengths of coax and I have some various different adapters on those in order to keep all of my adapters ready for operating in the field. So the one I'm gonna need is this one right here because it's gonna go from the BNC port to the SO239 and I can plug that in over on this side. So 
there's that. Now I've got the AX1. I can use a right angle connection, plug that in, attach the bipod. Loosen this up. That attaches right onto here. And then the bipod will provide a little additional stability. Next, I need to run the counterpoise wire and we'll do that onto there. And I've got two of them here. The smaller one is for operating on 20 and 17 meters. The longer one is for 40 meters. I'll go ahead and just deploy the longer counterpoise wire and I'm gonna stretch it out in that direction. So let me get that deployed real quick. And that's all I'm trying to do is just get it stretched out relatively straight. Remember when we talked about antennas and we said everything's a dipole unless it's a loop? Well, this is the other side of our dipole, which is that vertical element. So I'm just going to stretch this out on the ground, make sure it's relatively straight. And there we go. That's deployed. Okay, now I want to finish setting up the radio. So I always like to make sure I've got my external power plugged in. So I've got plenty of power running for the 705. The 705 does have an internal battery. So I generally don't have to worry about this, but it's nice to be able to have it as an option. So all you do is plug the power poles into one of the load ports on the Buddy Pole Power Mini. Run this cable around the back and simply plug it in to the back of the radio. There we go. Now I'm gonna also go ahead and get the radio connected to the Surface Go, and that's just done with a single USB cable. I did have to hunt around to find a USB cable that would work with this, and I've had to put some little ferrite beads on it in order to ensure I don't get any RFI issues. So I'm just gonna plug in. I really wish they had put USB-C ports on this because these USB micro ports are awful. All right, so that's plugged in. We'll run this, straighten this cable out, simply run it back here. Here's my uh, anchor multi-port. And again, I've had to put a lot of ferrite beads on it in order to make sure that I'm not getting any interference. So I can use this to simply plug into the Surface Go. And then I've got some regular USB-A ports in order to plug the radio in. And that's all the setup that needs to happen there. Okay, we've got everything wired up on the 705 now. So let's go ahead and power on the radio. And I'm already on the 40 meter band. Let me go into the function option. I'm gonna go over to page two where the tuner is and we'll turn on the tuner. And the tuner goes ahead and tunes up and it tunes up the, AH, the AX1 uh, nicely. So that's ready to go. Now I'm gonna come over here on the surface and open up Winlink. I've got my Winlink set up here. And I'm already set up on Vara HF because I was doing some testing earlier this morning to make sure everything was configured. I'll hit the open session option here. And let's first check and see if we can get a station. We'll try and connect up to, let's see, we'll click the drop down menu here. And who do we have? We've got AJ7C. We've got his gateway already saved in here. So we'll go ahead and select AJ7C. That's for 80 meters. Uh, it should select his 
40 meters. There's this 40 meters. All right, and so it jumped at to the correct frequency. Let me go ahead and tune again, make sure we are set up for that. So I'll go back into the function. So we're on the right frequency here. Go ahead and listen. I've got my preamp two on, so I should have uh, plenty of signal. Let's see if we can get a connection. I'm just gonna click the start button. And it looks like we are getting a connection here to AJ7C. So this will do a quick check and see if any new email has come in. And then I'll send a quick message to Dan, NR6V, because he's out at a deployment right now. I should be able to bring up Control Tab. We'll go over to Vara. Look at that, we've got a nice uh, Vara connection here. It's a little tricky to see here in the light, but it looks like we did get a solid connection here with the AX1. AX1, 